journey, the reasons why we're doing it, why we're focusing on it, and where we're going with it next. Because with all of this sort of stuff, we want to keep the focus on it. Um, so before I get into it, can I ask you, has, have you heard about Schwartz Rounds before? Do I just get a quick show of hands? Okay. Um, has anybody here ever been to a Schwartz Round? Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> so that's good. So we have two people in the room that have been. That's fantastic. Okay. Well, what I do then is I'll make sure that we explain what the Schwartz rounds are. Um, and can I just ask you, how many people here have staff reporting into them at the moment? And again, I just get a quick show of hands. Okay. How many people here think that staff in the system at the minute are engaged? Okay. Okay. And um, you can close your eyes with this one if you want to. How many people feel you're engaged yourselves? That's really good. I, I, asked, I asked that question of another group, and it was a group of clinical directors. And you could see them sort of saying, they said, no, 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 staff in the organisation aren't engaged at all, definitely not, no hands went up. And when I asked the question, are you engaged all of the time, you could see them warring with to be honest with you, do I say that this time is that I'm not 100% engaged? Because I would say it would be very challenging to be engaged 100% of the time in the organisations that we're working in at the moment. And if you are, I want to talk to you afterwards. You want to be <laughs> so what I'd say to you is, when we're looking at staff engagement, there is so much literature out there at the moment that talks about the impact and the, the, the benefits And it's not just patient safety, it's patient mortality. So if we're not looking after our staff in the organisations at the moment, it means that patients are dying. And that's not good enough when we're a healthcare organisation. And we talked about transformational leadership and we talked about um, you know, different types of leadership this morning. It's fantastic to have a vision for where you want to go. But the research is showing at the minute that the best types of leadership have a mix of skills. So you have to have the vision but you also have to be able to do something about the vision. So the mix of transformation and transaction is really important. And when we look at the, 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 the information that's out there, um, as I said, the clinical care, the number of incidents. I worked in complaints for a long time before I worked in staff engagement. And what I would say to you is that every single complaint that I ever looked at was a communications issue somewhere in it. And I'd say the bigger piece was if we'd asked the staff members what the issues were six months beforehand, they could have told us what the problems were. We are brilliant at spending money on fixing problems after they've happened. In the sense that we come up with a plan, the media report comes out and we start looking at it after that. And then you've got the whole issue of the impact on staff being involved in incidents. And you think yourselves, I don't know if anybody here has ever been involved in an incident, but it sticks with you. You know, it just stays with you. That second victim, that's what they call it, that second victim. So many people within our organisations are second victims because they've been involved in an incident that has potentially affected their family life. You know, because they go home in the evening and they're carrying it with them. And how can you how can you be, you know, a mother or a father to your family when you're so deeply affected by what's happening in the work environment? And it's not just on these incidents. There's the stresses of the day to day in the job. I don't know how you're finding it at the minute, but most of the staff that we've talked to, we've done a lot of work on staff sessions, talk to us about the effect of the budget constraints, talk to us about the impact of absenteeism, retention, burnout, stress, fatigue, and in the system of the moratorium, what's happened for so long, and Yale knows better than I do, one person goes on sick leave, by the time they come back, there's three more ready to go because they've recovered the person that's just gone. So, you know, this, this, is, this is a system we're working in, and as I said, if there's anyone not working in that system, let us know, because the other thing I would say to is, there is a lot of good stuff happening out there. And what we find is that there are people in the system making it work in very challenging circumstances. And what we're looking at here with the introduction of short
short term. So how do we start to look after our staff better? Because unless we can change the measures that we're using at the moment, unless we can start to look past how many patients did we see, how quickly did we see them, and start looking at changing what we're actually measuring, nothing is going to change. <coughs> so we need to change the focus of what our transactions are. And when we look at short terms, and I, I think very quickly, um, I'm going to talk just for a second. There's a really good um, document it's called Employee Engagement in NHS Performance. And it was, I refer to the, the literature that's out there at the moment from other countries <coughs> because we don't have the statistics in Ireland to, to, to show this to the extent that it's needed. Um, and that will come in time, but at the minute, there's some really good documentation out there. This, this particular one talks about job satisfaction, organisational commitment, turnover, intentions, and the physical and mental well-being of employees being predictors of organisational outcomes. Okay, so if you think of those things being the affecting the organisational output, I'm going to show you very quickly, and you might have seen them yet, some of the results of the National Staff Survey, your opinion counts. They're just coming out this week, but they were presented to the National Staff Engagement Forum on Monday. And the positives are showing that there is a really good level of enthusiasm in the system. Seven in ten are motivated in their job. People feel empowered and respected, and they feel committed to service delivery. So nearly every single staff member that we talked to talked about the reason they come to work is the difference that they make to the patient. The problem is they're finding it harder and harder to make that difference with the paperwork that needs to go with it, with the fact that the teams aren't interacting and they can't connect with the people around them because they're so focused on the job that needs to be done. Um, and we can see it in the results. So we, we talked a second ago about job satisfaction influencing the performance. Job satisfaction in the HSC, 29% are dissatisfied. Now we know that 56% are satisfied, but 29% are dissatisfied. That's nearly one in three staff members. Then two thirds are fulfilled and intend to stay with the organization. <coughs> Again, that means one third of people in our organization do not intend to stay. We have nearly 120,000 staff. If a third of those leave in the next few years, where are they going to be in terms of the knowledge and in terms of how we're going to continue to train up new people, how we're going to continue to recruit people? <coughs> and I don't think it's a coincidence that Philip spoke about one third of staff not feeling that they were being asked what changes need to be made in the system. There's one third people wanting to leave. It. I don't think there's an, you know, a, a, a natural abuse there. So we look at that, and in terms of the health and well-being, you can see that only 6% strongly agree that the organisation is genuinely interested in, in the well-being of staff. It's startling. Mm -hmm. Now, it's moving the right way, but it's taking time. And there is a lot of, um, I suppose, work within the system at the moment, work on the people's strategy, the framework for improving quality, the corporate plan, <coughs> um, the standards for better healthcare, the service plan, all talk about the importance of engaging staff. And within the system, if you're leading a team, or your own role, your own personal role within the team, you can do something about it in a very simple way. And short term is one of those things that we're, we're focusing on. And this is the, engage, the, the national staff engagement definition. Um, the, the definition that they come up with how do we engage staff, what do we engage short term? And the reason I'm showing that here is because all of this links into the reason why we want to do things like short term. This here, 50 staff members, mini organisation, and this is the definition that they came up with. It's interesting, we talked about the link between <coughs> academics and people not having qualifications early on. I would say in that room, not every single person in that room would have an academic qualification. But they came up with a definition that when you go back to the literature, reflects every single component of engagement. And the most important one I would say here is being valued and emotionally connected. Because if you're connected and you feel valued, you have the space to have a conversation about what counts, what counts. So Schwartz rounds. Um, when we talk about Schwartz rounds, it's a conversation with your team, and it's every single staff member on the team having a conversation about the emotional impact of our work. We're brilliant in the system at training people on how to do the nuts and bolts of your job. But we never talk to them, or very rarely, about how do you manage the emotional impact of care. And when you think about healthcare, you come into a system that is, by its very nature, 
going to show you glimpses of your own life. You'll see your, your father and a patient. You'll see your child. You'll see all of those connections with the people that you're meeting. And you will see people that have gone through the most horrific of circumstances. And where is that capacity in that? Like a staff survey shows how resilient our staff are. But at the same time, as an organization, we need to be making sure that we're looking after that and looking out for it. Because if we don't, we start to see the burnout. And the, the, in, in healthcare in particular, the level of burnout is quite high. And we're, we, we mask it. And we do it by pulling back. And in the pulling back, we lose touch with our compassion. And that's when you'll see that the mistakes start to happen. And the interesting thing is, from a complaints perspective, if you're nice to your patients, and something bad happens, they're less likely to sue you. But if you weren't nice to them, and something bad happens, they'll be on the phone to the solicitor going, here, listen, what are we going to do about it? Okay, so Schwartz round, as I said, it happens usually over a lunchtime conversation. So you, what you have is you've got a clinical lead and you have a facilitator. Um, and the clinical lead and the facilitator will invite, with the steering group, anybody in the organisation that wants to come. Okay, and that's everything from the consultant to the porter to the catering assistant to the nurse to the, you know, the physiotherapist. Everyone in the organisation can come to the short round. And what would happen is you come along, you have your lunch for half an hour, you get to chat over a cup of tea. And I firmly believe, do not underestimate the power of a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. It is a brilliant way to talk to people and connect with them. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is they come in to a setting. Usually it's on a flat surface, but sometimes it can be in an electric cage, but usually on a flat surface. And the chairs are set up in a semicircle. Okay. And at the very top of the room, what you have is, and forgive me, you have no bodies in the chairs, but you have your clinical lead sits in the first chair. In the next three to four chairs, you've got panelists that are going to share a story about a situation that they had in a workplace setting that affected them on an emotional level. They're not talking about the diagnosis, they're not talking about problem solving, they're talking about this is a patient I'll never forget and I'm going to share that story with you. This is a story I have about isolation. Whatever it is that they're going to share. <coughs> and the end seat is facilitator. <coughs> the placement of the chairs is actually really important because the clinical facilitator, uh, the clinical lead and the facilitator hold the emotion. So they sit on either side protecting the panelists and they hold the emotion. And in sitting in those two chairs, they're able to look to the wider room so that they can involve everybody in the conversation. And it starts off, the clinical lead will start the conversation and, and talk about where it started. And this whole journey started with a gentleman called Kenneth Schwartz in Boston. He, had, um, he was a, a young man, a wife and child, and he got a diagnosis of lung cancer. Non-smoker, you know, wasn't expected. And he said that the biggest thing, it was a terminal diagnosis, but the biggest thing, the most important thing for him in that period of time was the compassion of the staff. He said that changed his journey. And in doing that, it, it made him think about how were those staff being looked after? Who held the emotion for them? They held, they held it for him in that time of need, but who held it for them? And what they did was they took, um, he, he, he left a, uh, a legacy, he left a donation, and they set up the Kenneth B. Schwartz Center. And that's now the Boston Schwartz Center. And they started Schwartz Rounds. And now we're doing them in Ireland. And we hope that we're going to spread them over the next while because we're looking at the benefits of this for the staff involved. Mm -hmm. And if we don't change the focus in the system to start looking after our staff, then we're never going to change the dynamic. We're never going to change it. So, as I said, it focuses on the emotional impact of caring. It's tightly structured. So there'll be people there that'll be very safe and they'll say, you're going in there, I spill in your guts and what are you going to get out of it? And, you know, is it going to show anything? But the research is showing that all of this leads back into improvements in teamwork. It leads to an acknowledgement within a work environment that every single person in that organization is the professional at what they do. They know their job better than anybody else. And we're all equally affected by the people that we meet. And that's lost in today's environment because nobody knows what anybody else is doing. Or if they do know what they're doing, they're rarely getting to talk to them or rarely getting to connect with them because very few people take their tea breaks anymore. Okay. So these, these things are, are important. Um, as I said, they are tightly structured. Structure. They usually happen on a monthly basis. Um, usually the, there's a, you know, the same venue every month and what you're doing is you're building that up and people keep coming back. Okay. So we've been testing it at 
two sides. Black Rock Hospice and Galway University Hospital. Two very different sides. Black Rock Hospice has 63 staff. <coughs> University Hospital Galway has 3,000. In Black Rock Hospice, they have 63 staff, but they see an average number of 36. So nearly half the workforce will come, and the rest of them that don't come are on the floor minding the rest of the patients. Then in Galway University Hospital, the CEO was turned away the first three times he came because he was five minutes late, and the room was too full and they couldn't let him in. So they have capacity, they're full to capacity, and it's limited by the size of the room. <coughs> And, and I would say to you that at the moment, we've trained eight staff members. So usually what happens is you, you've got the clinical lead, you train two facilitators with the clinical lead. Okay? Um, and the first two groups went to England to do the training. What we're going to do is, in the next year, the Quality Improvement Division has partnered with the Point of Care Foundation. We're going to train 30 teams in Ireland in different services around the, around the country. Um, and it, it's working with the willing. So it's services that want to do this. There's no point in us saying to everybody, you must introduce Schwartz Rams. We, we do think it's the best thing ever. But, <laughs> you know, if services aren't willing, then we're at nothing. Because it won't, the ethos of it won't, won't work. And the other thing I would say to you on that is that the research in England is now showing <coughs> that the sites that introduce things like Schwartz Rams early see better results in patient safety and staff engagement than the ones that do it two or three years down the line because they have to do it. And that says something about the dynamic of an organisation. Mm -hmm. Because in those instances, the two or three years down the line, a lot of the time, it's a tick box exercise. Mm -hmm. It's we have to be seen to be done as we better bring it in. As opposed to the ones that actually recognise the merit and the value of this. And put the time and effort into it. Because there is time and effort involved in doing something like this. It doesn't just happen. Um, but again, that's about changing the mindset. Okay, this is the team. So you'll see here, um, this is the group from Black Rock Hospice and Galway um, University <coughs> Hospital. And we had an information day there recently. And we also, you'll see in the very front row, second from the left, Nikki Power. So the Point of Care Foundation arranges for a mentor to come to observe around in a setting. So the, the mentor is invited in. And the benefit of that is having someone from the outside coming along to give you guidance and advice on how your round is running and how it's operating. And that's important. Um, because in, in England at the moment, where they've got a very large number, they've over 100 organisations doing it, they're buddied together so they can see it in operation. In Ireland, we don't have that many sites doing it, we've only got two. So you've nowhere to go to feed, unless you want to go to England or Boston. It's hard enough to get your know, travel to come to Dublin for the day. So <laughs> I don't know what anybody else managed those trips. Um, but that's the, the sense of it. As I said, you've got your clinical lead, two facilitators. You also have a steering group. And the steering group is a wide group of staff from across the organisation, different levels, different grades. The idea of that is that, obviously with the Schwartz round, you're choosing topics for every round. By having people across the organisation, they can say to you, it's actually not a good time to do that particular round. We've had an incident about that. They don't need to go into the details, but they can tell it might be a good time to do it. The other thing about it is that in, in <coughs> that setting, they have that... Um, uh, knowledge about, I know Mary, and she'd be brilliant to do a story on that. You need your leadership behind it. It's absolutely vital. And you need your panelists. So you need people in the organisation to share their stories. But I would say to you, every single staff member in the settings that we work in will have more than one story to tell. Okay. Um, the staff are involved, and then you've got your mentor. Um, there is a time commitment. Um, these are some of the sample themes. So things like a county letter, happy ending, behind closed doors. You can start to move into very challenging themes. And in, in, in that, what you do is you're starting to surface the darkness in the organization or the challenges that we're facing. And it's not a problem solving. It's very clearly stated it's not problem solving. But what it does is in having the conversations, people find solutions themselves or they're able to talk to people within the organization about things that they wouldn't have broached before. Okay. Um, some of the feedback from Black Rock and Galway, 79% in Black Rock said it was excellent or exceptional. In Galway, 73% said that Schwartz rounds would help them work better with their colleagues. So the sense of community is starting to build. And that's, that's what we're doing. But that's, that's not in every place at the moment. In some places, and they do bring it, but that sense of community is starting to build back up. And that ties in with all of the talk you know, about values. So we talked about values early on. You know, Mark is going to talk about values in action. It gives us a chance to start cherishing what, what, why, why did we come to this in the first place? Why did we choose healthcare? Because in private
design industry, you know, we've all got great skills. You could, you know, you could really, but there's a vocation there in sometimes in working in healthcare. And the thing that I think is brilliant is seventy-five percent said they felt more engaged in their work after the short round. Now these are short-term goals, and the longer-term looks at the impact on things like retention, absenteeism, drops in incident management. Um, and again, some of the feedback, and we'll certainly these afterwards, you'll have them. I'm going to leave you with uh, a thought. So, every time you go on your holidays, you plan your destination with great uh, relish on <laughs> where you're going to go. And you could be going somewhere around as well, I should say. But if you're going and you're going to take a flight, the first thing the flight air hostess will say to you is, if the plane is about to crack, well, obviously they don't even get enough. But they will tell you that if the plane is about to crash, you put your own oxygen mask on first. You can look after someone else until you look after yourself. The thing I would say to you is, is when you get on the airplane, you know the oxygen mask is going to be there. And as leaders in the organization, we need to make sure that we have the equivalent of whatever that oxygen mask is available for our staff. So we need to make sure that we're producing things for short-term.